Hi everyone, I'm Mark Despotakis from Progressive Music and welcome to this first episode of uh, What Life is Like uh, during this time of quarantine and staying home. Uh, we're going to be bringing you some interviews over the next, next couple weeks with some local folks, some national folks um, who have to talk uh, about music education and how music education uh, is being impacted by everything going on in the world. So our first uh, guest on, on this uh, special series is Sarah Person. Uh, she's the orchestra director at uh, the McKeesport Area School District Elementary and High School. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So uh, first of all, tell us what, what, all the, what all you teach in the district. So I teach high school orchestra. I also teach music theory one and music theory two at the high school level. Um, our high school orchestra is ninth through 12th grade. About 50 students are in that class. Um, and then I also teach fourth and fifth grade orchestra lessons in both of our elementary buildings, which is Twin Rivers and Francis McClure. Okay, so let's, let's go back in time. So here we are April 15th. So roughly a month ago now, um, we all find out schools are gonna close. At that point, we think it's just for a couple of weeks. Uh, we don't know, you know how long and arguably today, we still don't know how long. But what was that day? Kind of take us back to that moment of, okay, we're going to close. What was that like for you? What was that like for the students? So the crazy part for the McKee sports students is that day that that announcement came that Friday, we actually had a scheduled day off of school. It was like, I think a winter break day. So we weren't even at school that day. So the previous day, that Thursday, a bunch of us had been talking about it. There was a little bit of, oh, this might happen. So we did, we were thoughtful enough to have told the students before they left that day, hey, you might want to take your instruments home, you know, over the long weekend. So I remember hearing about that on Friday and just talking to some of my colleagues, you know, on the phone or on text messaging this is going to be for two weeks. And at the time, even two weeks sounded insane. Our spring musical was coming up. We were going into tech week the following week for the musical. And we were kind of worrying about that. A um, couple concerts coming up we were worried about. So it was, it was crazy. It was so overwhelming. And then, you know, going into that some more, we found out that it was extended even further. Um, and now we still, you know, don't know when we're all going to see each other again so and and that's that's an, uh, another interesting piece i mean obviously this time of year we're all used to going to see high school musicals all around the area and and you guys were so close to that um you know i saw the sets being built on the school and everything and and so that's got to be kind of that extra level of disappointment for those kids and for all of you that have worked so hard on the other end of it oh yeah yeah huge that was the first thing we'd actually heard was going to be moved uh, before they announced the closure. They said, we're, we're gonna move this because it was something that was gonna bring in the public from the outside and just to be safe, they were planning on, on uh, postponing it a little bit. So we were kind of making plans for that, choosing some dates and then very quickly the closure happened, so. So uh, across the state, across the country, really probably across the world, as this closure happened, education completely changed, right? What, what we were used to it um, yeah. completely changed and, and moved into doing things like we're doing now, right? So we're social mm -hmm. distancing, we're, we're in our homes, you know, talking on Zoom, which is the new yeah. way of doing things. Um, a lot of districts, you know, have that ability, had a built-in ability for every student to do that. McKeesport is one of the ones that, that doesn't, has, doesn't have a one-to-one -one initiative. And we don't need to go into all, all, all of the reasons behind that. Um, but but that is, that's an issue in the district that they've tried to face and they've tried to overcome in a variety of ways. It adds an extra layer of difficulty, I think, for music educators mm -hmm. when you're so used to, you know, there, there is that, that family feel of being in a room and an ensemble or working one-on-one -on -one with a student. So you had to kind of figure out, how do I react to this? How do I provide something for my students? So talk us through kind of what you decided to do. Yeah, I, um, I think it was that first Monday that we missed school. We, you know, we were planning on going to work that Monday and it, there was just this huge shock. We were all kind of like, what, like what now, what do we do? So the, the way that I could get a hold of my students right away was through the Remind app, which I've been using for years, which I love. And I remember just sending out a message to all my kids, like, 
hope you guys are doing well. well I'll be in touch soon. And at the time, we had a directive that it was a two week closure and we, we technically were not supposed to be teaching at that time because the, the, we were closed across the state. Um, but we were having Zoom meetings with um, head principals and just trying to figure out some kind of plan. Um, so uh, I set up, a couple weeks later, I set up a Google Classroom um, and I set one up for high school orchestra and I set one up for my music theory to students and sent those links out through Remind and through our booster um, organization. They sent some emails out to families and just tried to reach as many families as we could in my program to get all of the kids together and just have everybody on the same platform. Um, and it, it's great, it's worked out really well uh, using the Google Classroom. You know, there's families I haven't been able to come in contact with yet and students I haven't seen yet. Um, but we've, I've been making sure they have something to do. They have access to the music on the Google Classroom. They have my information. I'm available for, for meetings like this to, um, I, I've had a couple meetings where I've had students with their instrument, cause I, you know, a strings teacher, and tuning those instruments is hard. I struggle sometimes with those, those tough instruments. So I've had meetings where I'm, I have a student with their instrument that's just all the strings are loose and, and me on the other end, okay, like try to tighten that G a little bit. Um, so that's been kind of fun. But, um, you know, nothing is, is mandatory for them right now, but the amount of students that are eager for the work and are eager for the connection and the conversation and copies of the music to play is 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 actually truly wonderful. Yeah, I think it really speaks to the power of, of what what's happening in a music classroom generally uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and it, it's just that connection, because I think there's a different connection with students to a music teacher than um, with other teachers. So let's, let me ask you this. If, if there's some students out there who might be seeing this, who might not have gotten your information elsewhere, what's the best way for them to contact you, you know, to, so that they can keep playing? Great idea. So I've, I've been telling kids just to email me. So it's S-P-E-R-S-I-N at M-C-K-A-S-D dot net. So send me an email and I'll make sure to get that Google Classroom link. All you need is a Google um, or a G, like a Gmail address to, to do that. Um, so that's probably the best way. So in, in, and right now it's just for high school kids you're doing this? or Right now it's just for high school kids. So McKeesport was actually over these last few weeks able to um, get technology. Um, so they are, I believe our official virtual learning kickoff is next week, April 20th. Um, they were able to get iPads. So they're figuring out this week how to safely distribute those to families who are in need. Um, and so next week there will be virtual learning started officially for the district. And so then what does that mean? You'll be able to do elementary as well? Is that your plan? Yeah. So that's my plan. So I, I getting in touch with the elementary principals to set up some sort of way for these elementary kids to have Zoom lessons, group lessons, um, mirror a little bit what I'm doing with my high school orchestra students um, at the elementary level. And you even found a way to, for, for kids who maybe didn't take an instrument home, you found a way to, to get some of those to them if they were able to get to you. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We, we were able to reach out to just the families of our instrumental students at the high school level um, and the middle school did this as well in, in their own way. But at the high school, what we did was we, we set a two hour window and it was myself, the band director and a principal at the building. And we were able to have uh, families pull up to the curb um, you know, one of us would talk to the family and see what all, how, you know, some of our kids play multiple instruments, what instruments they had in the building. And we went safely into the building, gloves, masks, and, and grabbed the instruments for the kids and put them in the cars for the families. So students uh, were able to get their instruments if they didn't have it at home. And of course there are, are students who don't have their instruments at home if they weren't able to get them that day. Um, and so on my Google Classroom, I also have 
assignments set up for students who don't have instruments. So um, I have some basic theory work on there, some flashcard type things, just to keep keep their brain going musically and really to just connect with the kids still. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fantastic um, because I think that's what kids want right now. They need some type of connection because you know, they're in the four walls of their house. Yeah. Um, and so they, they missed that classroom connection. Um, and I just love the idea that you said, okay, so we're, we're, it's, you're facing every challenge. So the challenge was maybe a kid doesn't have an instrument. Okay, we'll, we'll find some other thing. It's funny because I follow some of these things online, um, these, these teaching online, how do you teach music online groups? And um, one, I think it was a high school band director put out this list of, you know, they did it like a final four bracket, like 64 of the of the the most important pieces of band literature, right? And I found myself downloading and I'm like, oh, I don't know that one. I don't know that one. And so I'm kind of enjoying going through it. So I think that's wonderful that you're you're providing that alternative uh, option. Yeah. So let's think ahead. We, we don't know what ahead looks like. We know that the school year is closed down, that students are not going to be back into a school at any point in this year. Um, virtual instruction, certainly coming in McKeesport, already happening in other places, will happen mostly in other, in other places too. We don't know what the fall looks like, um, but we do know that we're going back to school at some point. Right. The, 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 this is going to start again at some point. This isn't going to be a forever thing, and it, it certainly, it can't be. Um, what, if you thought ahead, what does that look like? Because here you are in a situation where, yes, you're providing what you can to folks, but they're all going, they're coming in at different entry points. Mm -hmm. um, what does the fall potentially look like? Let's say we go back at the end of August, beginning of September. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of challenges. Not that we don't already, but I think we're gonna have students who, those students maybe that we haven't connected with, the students that are you know, not able to to get onto the Google Classroom or students who didn't have their instruments. Um, I think we'll face some challenges of bringing everybody back together, maybe some some retention issues, um, having to make sure if 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 our kids didn't have their instrument, how do we make sure that they're ready for the next school year? Um, this this is what working at home is right. That's okay. This is working at home, folks. Cats come into the picture. Yeah. Cats are allowed in. Yeah, they're allowed in. But uh, you know, I I I don't worry too much about about losing any of my kids, just because I think that I can I can see now, and I know how I'm feeling that I miss it, and I know they miss it. Yeah. And so I'm just so excited and so ready for for to be back in the classroom with them and making music. And this this has been 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 a challenge, but it's been great to learn the technology and just kind of navigate this yeah. difficult time with, and, and learning some new new tools and some tricks. So I think a lot of us as educators will take some of these, the Google Classroom and um, the the virtual learning and t teaching kids. Hey, if they're on Christmas break and they're, they break a string. Hey, Mrs. Person, can we zoom real quick and can you help me with yeah. my string? Like maybe, you know, we've, we've learned some, some new things. I, I love that you're, that's your attitude. You're, you're, you're finding the opportunity in this. I mean, I think that's what we all need to, to do in so many ways. Um, again, uh, if there's students out there watching, um, send an email. Uh, to Mrs. Person, sperson at mckasd.net. We'll put it up on the screen too. Um, that you know, be you can be in touch with her if you need to tune a string or whatever it is. Uh, that's the place to go. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for doing this. We'll we'll check back in with you to see how things go uh, over the next few weeks. I appreciate you being Great. here. Thank you. And everybody, we'll see you uh, next time. We'll do a, uh, I'm not going to tell you who's going to be on, but uh, we have a lot of surprises for you uh, coming up. Thanks for joining us.